For the past year now, I've been doing a ton of work on my computer and I'm sure all of you have been doing that too. And that led to pretty much countless night after night of really tight forearms, a lot of muscle soreness, muscle knots here and there. I could just press on it and I could feel tightness happening. So I decided I need to change something and I decided to get a new mouse, the Logitech MX vertical mouse. This is my first time using a vertical mouse and man has it changed the game. For me especially. It's relieved so much of my pain and discomfort throughout the day and no longer do I have those muscle knots in my forearms. In this video, I'm going to review this mouse and help you decide whether this is a mouse that's worth purchasing for you or not. Let's jump into it. All right, this is Betty from Switch and Click and a mouse review is something we rarely see on the channel. But guess what? It's 2021, we're branching out. A while ago, I reviewed the Logitech Ergo M575. Link that right here if you're interested in checking that out. It's a thumb trackball mouse and I really didn't like it because it caused my thumb some pain. So my OT brain was like, hmm, how can I relieve my discomfort? How about using a mouse that has a more neutral forearm rotation? So I went out and I bought the the MX vertical mouse and I've been using it for the past two months pretty much non-stop every day like from morning till evening. This mouse has been through a lot of use and I finally feel ready to review it. Let's jump into what's in the box. All right in the box you get the mouse itself of course star of the show we'll go on and talk about this a ton later on. You get the Logitech unifying receiver dongle connects right into your PC you don't have to use it if you don't want to. The mouse also connects via Bluetooth. You get a USB-C charging cable. It's gray, matches the mouse. Yeah, there's nothing special about it. It's rubber. I have not used it because I have a ton of USB-C cables lying around. You can if you want. It also comes with some uh, paperwork, interesting paperwork. Not much that you really need to see. Got a battery disposal information sheet, a setup guide in four different languages, English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. Pretty helpful. You have some safety, compliance, warranty, and information here. No one reads this stuff. And that's it. That's pretty much all you get in the box. The box itself uses a ton of material. It opens up. It lets you see the mouse while, you know, before you purchase it. I'm not sure why I still have the box. I'm definitely keeping this sucker forever. All right, let's move on to build quality. I've been using this guy for two months now and I knock it around a lot. I move it around a lot, I throw it places. There's always things on my desk. As you know, it's very cluttered and it's been super durable. No scratches, no bumps, nothing too crazy going on. There's a little bit of like finger oil on the side because it's where I rest my pinky finger and my ring finger. I use it a lot. The weight of the mouse is around 127 grams. Now this is nowhere near the lightweight gaming mice that you see nowadays with the honeycomb patterns and the shells and all that fancy stuff that weigh like 60 grams. This thing is more than double one of those things, but that doesn't really matter because we're not gaming with this. It slides fairly well on a desk mat, nothing to worry about. It feels super lightweight regardless of how heavy it seems. It's pretty easy to pick up, has a nice grip to it. Just doesn't feel heavy to move around at all, especially compared to like a gaming mouse. Let's start at the bottom. On the bottom here, you're gonna see that there's two round feet available and that makes it so the mouse glides across the desk pretty smoothly and easily. Now it's not going from one side to the other side like you see in those gaming mice reviews where you just push it once and it flows off into who knows where. It has some friction but it's pretty smooth. There's an on off toggle slider here. If it's on it's green, if it's off it's red. You got the sensor and all that good stuff and then the button down here to connect up to three devices and that's so you can use the flow that allows you to move things from one computer to another to another. I don't do that because I only have pretty much one desktop that I use but that options there if you're using a laptop, a tablet, and all of that and you just want to drag and drop everywhere. That's it for the back. At the front here you'll see a USB-C port that you can connect to your computer while you're using it, while you're charging it. This thing has a big 
battery life. I pretty much have not charged it this entire time and it's been a full two months of just like non-stop use. I might turn it off at night, but other than that, it goes to sleep on its own and it connects back really quickly to where I don't even notice that it's not responding. On the left side here, you're going to notice that there are some ridged portions to the design of it. And this is all a rubber, really grippy material and it doesn't slide off your hand pretty easily. But part of it, it does accumulate a little bit of finger oils despite its grippy rubbery material. There's a battery light indicator on the left side. It is super duper small, but it does glow either green or red when you turn it on. There's two buttons here, one for like page forward and back, but you can mod these to be whatever it is with the software. The top, you see this Logitech logo and then a button here that you can also modify to whatever you want. Right now it's set to change the sensitivity of the mouse depending on what application I'm using. You got a nice scroll wheel here with some rubber material on top and this thing is super smooth, produces some sound but relatively quiet. And of course you have your left and right click buttons. It's sort of loud I guess but relatively to like a super loud keyboard it's pretty quiet. Yeah it's pretty self-explanatory. The tilt as they say is 57 degrees so that's from this corner to this corner here and your forearm gets to be pretty neutral overall the build quality is super durable i've used it a ton the rubber doesn't get scratches or anything it does get some marks if you like take a nail and slide it across but you can just rub that off really easily nothing too crazy here i do bump into a lot if i'm just typing over here and then i'm reaching over there i'll like slide and knock it over and that happens a ton actually and i've read that happens to a lot of other people as well you just put it right back to where it is and keep working overall it seems to be a durable mouse gonna be able to take a beating and i'll be using it a ton so far it's already worth it to me but i'm not sure if it's worth it to you let's go into battery life so this thing has a pretty large battery life they say that it can last up to four months without charging and i've gone two without charging so i'm gonna see if I can get to the four months. It charges super quick. When it runs out, they say that you can get up to three hours on just one minute of charging and you can charge it via the included USB-C cable. You can also use it while it's connected, but this thing isn't long enough for my standing desk, so I don't do that. Super impressive battery life. In terms of ease of usage, it was super easy to connect and just plug and play right out of the box. I use the unifying receiver to connect it to my computer However, you can also use Bluetooth as well. It's pretty responsive. My computer has a Bluetooth connector, but this seems to not interfere with other things. If I'm connecting multiple devices to my computer, I don't really like that interference. So the unifying receiver is quite nice. One of the things that I have to complain about here is that the mouse itself doesn't have a place where you can just plug the receiver in for storage and I find that this is going to be pretty easy to lose. The trackball mouse had a place to store this thing within the mouse and I thought that was really cool. Even other gaming wireless mice have a place where you can store their little dongle. That would just be nice to have but no big deal. It's pretty much plugged into my computer all day. I don't have to worry about losing it but if I were to take it somewhere that would be a major concern of mine. Alright so you can work the mouse without having to download download the software, but I do recommend that you download it because pointer speed really matters here. Sometimes with super high sensitivity, it's super easy to just glide from one thing to the other and not be super precise, but when it's slow, you can move around more and be more accurate and be more precise when you're pressing specific things, especially with video editing. I find that a slower speed is much better for my workflow, but it's going to depend on you. With the software downloaded, you can do a ton of things you can program each individual button to do whatever you want and you can also set application specific settings as well for example if you're browsing chrome and you want this to be back and this to be forward and this to open a new tab you can totally do that you can swap the left and right click buttons although i'm not sure why you would but maybe you would but other than that you cannot reprogram the left and right click buttons but everything else you can reprogram there's not a ton of options here using the logitech options you can also enable 
enable flow, which is the thing that enables you to connect up to three devices and drag and drop things between them. Yeah, I recommend you download the software. It does open itself as an overlay. And when I first start my computer, it at like a super high speed until that overlay loads and then it'll be slow again. That does take some background computing power, but it's pretty lightweight. In terms of comfort and switching to this mouse, it took me about a week to really find what I found comfortable with it. I didn't know where to rest my hand on the mouse. Should I like rest at the top? Should I rest at the bottom? Should I hover my wrist, leave my forearm on the, on the desk? I had no idea what I was doing. Bend my fingers, straighten my fingers. It took some time to really figure out what was best for me. I found that if I straighten my fingers for too long, my pinky and ring finger would sort of be stuck like that and be super stiff. So I tried like a super bent finger position and then that got uncomfortable over time. So the most natural position for me is just to rest my thumb directly on the hump on the left side and all my finger joints are slightly bent. My forearms rested on the desk, but my wrist is slightly hovered and that's been the best for me so far. And it's been the most natural position as well. But the first week I definitely had some issues. So if you have a little bit of adjustment time, that's totally normal, I suppose. You're still gonna need ample desk space as you would with any other mouse because you're going to be moving a lot, especially if it's on a low sensitivity. You're gonna be moving it quite a lot. But one downside here is, of course, this mouse is for right-handed people only. It's not going to work if you're going to put it in your left hand because the clickies are on the wrong side. It's super awkward. If my right hand's busy doing something, like, I don't know, eating chips with chopsticks or something, and I wanna do something with my left hand, it's just really awkward getting my fingers around there to try and do something. Unlike a regular mouse where you can go either hand and it's probably going to be okay. All right, what would be a switch and click review without a sound test. We'll be going through all the sounds that this mouse makes, gliding on the desk, all the buttons being clicked, scroll wheel, toggle on off, all that stuff right now. All right, there you go. That was the sound test. It was really weird, I guess. Why are you doing sound tests over a mouse? But some people, they wanna know how loud their mouse is. The clicks are pretty high pitched. The scroll wheel, super smooth and quiet. Overall, it is a quiet mouse, especially compared to my keyboard. That makes a ton of sounds quiet. It's office appropriate. Take it wherever you want. Don't lose your dongle. All right, what's the purpose of a vertical mouse? When you're using a regular mouse and your forearm super pronated, there's these two bones that sort of twist here and those muscles get really tired if you're doing it for a long time. And that's why I opted for a vertical mouse so my forearm would be in a more neutral position. Logitech calls it the handshake position. I'm just gonna call it a neutral forearm position. You're not pronated, you're not supernated. It's somewhere in between. and it's it's pretty comfortable. A lot of these muscles get to relax and not have to be working all the time while I'm working. I use this primarily for productivity tasks, daily tasks such as browsing the internet, video editing, doing work related things, emails, whatever. I've tried it for gaming with like a MOBA or a FPS and it's a disaster. It feels super weird when you're aiming or when you're clicking a lot. It's just not good. I know there are people that game with a vertical mouse. I'm not going to be one of those people. Whenever I play games, I just find another mouse, connect it to my computer, route it or whatever, and do that. This just feels weird when I'm gaming and I'm not willing to give it the time to be bad at a game for such a long time before I get used to it. It's just not worth it for me. In essence, you could. All right, so what's the verdict on the MX Vertical Mouse? It's not cheap. It's about $100. It costs the same as an MX Master 3 and I was looking at that mouse. People 
were really recommending it for video editing and I wanted to give it a shot. I also knew that I didn't really like the ergonomics of that mouse, so I opted for this one. It lacks some of the productivity features that the MX Master 3 does have, but I think it's worth it for me. The comfort is more than worth it. Anything to be pain-free during the day, especially as I grow older and sitting at the computer and doing a lot of computer-related tasks gets to be a burden on your body over time. I've heard testimonials where a vertical mouse doesn't help them and where a trackball does. So in the end, it is a one-to-one -one basis. You're gonna have to experiment and see what's going to work for you. Go ahead and try it out. And if it doesn't work, you probably could still return it and try something else. It takes a while to really figure out what works for your body and what works for the task that you do specifically. I know it's a cop-out, but as an OT, everything's personalized. You gotta do an eval, you gotta know the person, what they do on a regular basis, their body, their anatomy, things like that. Depends. Everything's a gray area and it depends. I hope this video helped you out. For me, it was 100% worth $100. 100%. More than that even. Being pain-free means a lot. That's why I have a standing desk. That's why I do a lot of things. It helps a lot. But anyways, I hope this video helped you out. If you do want to check my trackball review, link it up right here and you can check that out. But other than that, I appreciate you for being here. You can check out the link to the MX vertical down below if you're interested. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!